This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English, episode number 339, baby. Oh yeah, even though I'm looking at the numbers of recent podcasts and they haven't really followed the routine that numbers follow, you know where it goes like four, five, six, seven. I've had a bit of difficulty with that, counting, sure, Um, but now we are kind of on episode 339. So apologies for not being around recently. I forgot to tell you I was going on holiday. Obviously, members of the Rock and Roll English family know that because I'm very close to them. But to the normal rock and rollers of this normal podcast, let's call it, I forgot to tell you that. But yes, I have been on holiday for the last few weeks with my family. A nice break, even though when you go on holiday with two young children, it's kind of just parenting in a hotter place certainly if you live in England but I did have a nice break and I do feel quite energized at the moment I feel the new year is starting because for me the year goes from September to August it doesn't go from January to December that's the normal one isn't it and I also read a book which I think has changed my life okay now I might just be saying that because it's like the end of the year for me and I'm thinking this is a new beginning and I'm feeling quite energized but I kind of think it has certainly the way I look at rock and roll English which I don't like to say it but it is kind of my business that word sounds so horrible doesn't it business because for me it's just more of a passion so yes the book has basically just reinforced what I kind of already knew about how when you create a business it's like creating your piece of the world where you make the rules and the whole point of having it is to be happy so do things that you want to do not things that you should be doing and I kind of feel like maybe I recently have been doing things I think I should be doing instead of things I want to be doing and also again it reinforced the thing which I already knew which is via your business you can make your dreams come true but only if you make other people's dreams come true so that's what I'm trying to do maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration to say I'm going to make your dreams come true but I can certainly help you with your English and hopefully make it enjoyable which is the whole reason rock and roll English exists so I'm going to keep things very much in the R&R English style of not boring. That is the number one rule and doing things that I enjoy. Otherwise, what is the point? And hopefully, because if you have listened to this podcast for a long time, maybe you kind of know me. And if maybe you think I'm all right, maybe hopefully the things that I like are the things that you like. So today I have something for you, not something that's going to change the world or make your dreams come true, but something I enjoyed making and something that will help you. So in 2019, I believe I wrote an ebook called English on the toilet with lots of short true stories about my life, funny stories. And at the end of the stories were some explanations of vocabulary, grammar, and even some comprehension questions. But recently I decided to make it into an audiobook, I think because I have been listening to a few audiobooks myself and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do that because again, it's something that I enjoyed doing. So today I have one of the stories for you to listen to. Now, you've heard me tell lots of stories on this podcast. I suppose the only difference is this is kind of a writing style. So obviously I had time to think about how to deliver this. So it's a story which is told as if it is written because spoken English and written English are two different things. So let's say there is more impact in this story in comparison to the normal stories that I tell on the podcast. So I'm not really going to say much more. I'm just going to play the story. Are you ready? Let's go. So this story is called Day at the Pub, Tattoo on the Bum. I was drunk. That's the only reason I can think of why I didn't realise. We were in the pub on a Tuesday afternoon, so the situation was never going to end well. We were supposed to be in school, but we decided that we had worked hard enough for that day. So we went to the White Horse Pub, our favourite drinking hole at the time. It wasn't even 4pm and we had already drunk four pints of beer. Shall we get another one? Lee asked me. 
I don't know, mate, I replied. I'm pretty hammered already. I might just call it a day here. I wish I had gone home. What happened next was not something that I ever expected. It wasn't even something that had ever crossed my mind. Instead of getting another beer, do you want to do something crazy? Lee proposed. He had my attention. Like what? I asked curiously. Let's go and get a tattoo, he said. Wow, that is not what I was expecting. I was only 16 and my mum would have killed me. I thought for a second I didn't want to chicken out. OK, let's do it, I responded, shaking his hand at the same time. We took our coats, then started walking round the streets. We had no idea where we could get a tattoo, as it obviously wasn't something we had ever thought about before. Finally, we found somewhere. But it was nearly 6pm, so it was closing. Go to this address, the woman in the shop told us. They are open until 8pm. After 30 minutes on the train, we arrived. We expected a big tattoo parlour, but instead it was just someone's house. Not only that, the bloke whose house it was looked like he was younger than us. And we were only 16. Uh, we're here to get a tattoo, we said, at this point both shitting our pants. No problem, gentlemen. Come this way, he responded. I think neither of us wanted to go ahead with it at this point, but neither of us wanted to say that we were scared. So the easiest thing to do was to get the tattoo. Yes, I know that makes no sense. I had no idea what I wanted. The only thing I knew was that I wanted to get the tattoo on my bum so that my mum would never see it. I looked around the shop at various designs. This will do, I said. It was my name in Chinese. I thought it looked nice. If only I had looked closer at what it said. You will find out why later in the story. Just remember this part. I had to pull down my trousers and pants a bit so that he could do the tattoo. I don't want to look at the needle. I said to him, just do it. I was worried about the pain. I thought that he had started, so I said, ah, this is fine. It doesn't hurt at all. Uh, I'm just shaving your bum at the moment, he said. You are very hairy. Ah, that's probably why it doesn't hurt then. When it did start and he put the needle in my skin, fuck. It really hurts, I shouted. Stop being a girl, the man responded. It will be finished in a few minutes. The pain was incredible. I thought I was going to faint. Luckily, it only took 10 minutes. If it had taken longer, I think I really would have fainted. My friend Lee went next and then we quickly got the train home to return to the pub for a celebratory drink. We will be the coolest people in school tomorrow, we said to each other. We were wrong. Very, very wrong. Well, only half wrong, because Lee would be the coolest person in school. I was going to be the stupidest. I arrived nice and early to school the next day. I saw my friend Speedy. All right, Speedy, I asked happily. Not bad. You? He replied. Fantastic, thanks, I said with a big grin of excitement on my face. Why are you so happy? He asked curiously. Well, I got a tattoo last night. Just a normal Tuesday for me, I said in my super cool voice. Look, I'll show you. I pulled my trousers down just enough to show him the tattoo. At this point, he burst out laughing. Why have you got BJ on your bum? Speedy said. 
I looked down. I was horrified. It did say Martin in Chinese. The only problem is that Martin in Chinese looks like the letters B J in England. And B J in English means blowjob. And if you don't know what blowjob means, have a look on Google. But let me tell you now, it is something sexual. And that is what I have got tattooed on my bum by accident. And yes, if you're wondering, I obviously still have that tattoo today. So I hope you enjoyed the story. And yes, as mentioned, it is obviously a true story and I still have that tattoo today. But luckily, thank God I wasn't so stupid and I got it in a place where no one can see it because it is on my bum. In fact, sometimes when I get out the shower and maybe I see myself in a mirror, I kind of think, oh, yeah, I forgot I have that tattoo, don't I? Um, so let's have a quick look at some of the vocabulary. So we had the term drinking hole. I mentioned it was our favorite drinking hole at the time, the White Horse Pub. So drinking hole is an informal way to say pub, a place where you drink. I also mentioned in the story that my friend asked me if I wanted to continue drinking, but I said, no, I'm pretty hammered already. So pretty hammered, again, an informal way to say quite drunk. I also mentioned that the idea of getting a tattoo hadn't even crossed my mind. So if something hasn't crossed your mind, it means you have never thought about it. And I also mentioned that when my friend mentioned the tattoo, I wanted to chicken out. So when you chicken out, it's when you say you're going to do something like this, but then you say, oh, no, I'm too scared. That is chickening out. But luckily, I didn't do it. I also mentioned how we went to a tattoo parlor. That is the name of the place where you get a tattoo. And I mentioned that the bloke in the tattoo parlor seemed younger than us. Now, bloke is an informal way to say man. Obviously, as well, we had the word bum in the story a lot. Bum is ass, or as an American would say, ass. If you are looking for a nice way to say it, let's say, like the way I say to my children, it would be bottom. OK, then I also mentioned that I didn't want to look at the needle. So the needle is the thing that they use to give you a tattoo. And also, if you need an injection, you will have a needle put into your arm, probably arm, maybe leg. I don't know. So I also mentioned when I saw my friend Speedy, I said, all right, Speedy. So remember, in the UK, all right is another way to say hello. And I also said I had a big grin of excitement on my face. So a grin is a smile. And I said that Speedy burst out laughing when he saw the tattoo. Obviously, it's easy to understand what it means. It means you laughed a lot. And then I said that I got the tattoo by accident. So I didn't do it on purpose. It was a mistake. I didn't know that Martin in Chinese looks like BJ. And again, if you go onto Google now and you write Martin in Chinese, then have a look at what it looks like. And you will see it looks like the letters, the English letters B and J. And I also mentioned right at the end, I still have the tattoo to this day. Now, as for some grammar, I mentioned that we had already drunk four pints of beer past perfect here to talk about something that happened before. So I was telling you at this point of the story in the conversation, but something had happened before. What? We had already drunk four pints of beer. I also said, I wish I had gone home. So this is a past wish. So we use subject plus wish plus subject plus had plus past participle. Now that probably means nothing to you. So just do this. If you're talking about a past wish, you can just say, I wish I had and then I wish I had gone. I wish I had done. I wish I had eaten. I wish I had studied, whatever it is. And last but not least, I said, if only I had looked closer at what the tattoo said. So this if only we use this to again talk about things in the past that cannot be changed when used in this context. So again, if only I had 
eaten better food when I was young. If only I had studied more when I was young. If only I had not got a tattoo with BJ on my ass. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed all of the vocabulary. Now you are going to listen to the story again. So sit back and relax and happy listening. I was drunk. That's the only reason I can think of why I didn't realise. We were in the pub on a Tuesday afternoon, so the situation was never going to end well. We were supposed to be in school, but we decided that we had worked hard enough for that day. So we went to the White Horse Pub, our favourite drinking hole at the time. It wasn't even 4pm and we had already drunk four pints of beer. Shall we get another one? Lee asked me. I don't know, mate, I replied. I'm pretty hammered already. I might just call it a day here. I wish I had gone home. What happened next was not something that I ever expected. It wasn't even something that had ever crossed my mind. Instead of getting another beer, do you want to do something crazy? Lee proposed. He had my attention. Like what? I asked curiously. Let's go and get a tattoo, he said. Wow, that is not what I was expecting. I was only 16 and my mum would have killed me. I thought for a second I didn't want to chicken out. OK, let's do it, I responded, shaking his hand at the same time. We took our coats, then started walking round the streets. We had no idea where we could get a tattoo, as it obviously wasn't something we had ever thought about before. Finally, we found somewhere. But it was nearly 6pm, so it was closing. Go to this address, the woman in the shop told us. They are open until 8pm. After 30 minutes on the train, we arrived. We expected a big tattoo parlour, but instead it was just someone's house. Not only that, the bloke whose house it was looked like he was younger than us. And we were only 16. Uh, we're here to get a tattoo, we said, at this point both shitting our pants. No problem, gentlemen. Come this way, he responded. I think neither of us wanted to go ahead with it at this point, but neither of us wanted to say that we were scared. So the easiest thing to do was to get the tattoo. Yes, I know that makes no sense. I had no idea what I wanted. The only thing I knew was that I wanted to get the tattoo on my bum so that my mum would never see it. I looked around the shop at various designs. This will do, I said. It was my name in Chinese. I thought it looked nice. If only I had looked closer at what it said. You will find out why later in the story. Just remember this part. I had to pull down my trousers and pants a bit so that he could do the tattoo. I don't want to look at the needle. I said to him, just do it. I was worried about the pain. I thought that he had started, so I said, ah, this is fine. It doesn't hurt at all. Uh, I'm just shaving your bum at the moment, he said. You are very hairy. Ah, that's probably why it doesn't hurt then. When it did start and he put the needle in my skin, fuck. It really hurts, I shouted. Stop being a girl, the man responded. It will be finished in a few minutes. The pain was incredible. I thought I was going to faint. Luckily, it only took 10 minutes. If it had taken longer, I think I really would have fainted. My friend Lee went next and then we quickly got the train home to return to the pub for a celebratory drink. We will be the coolest people in school tomorrow, we said to each other. We were wrong. 
very, very wrong. Well, only half wrong, because Lee would be the coolest person in school. I was going to be the stupidest. I arrived nice and early to school the next day. I saw my friend Speedy. All right, Speedy, I asked happily. Not bad. You? He replied. Fantastic, thanks. I said with a big grin of excitement on my face. Why are you so happy? He asked curiously. Well, I got a tattoo last night. Just a normal Tuesday for me. I said in my super cool voice. Look, I'll show you. I pulled my trousers down just enough to show him the tattoo. At this point, he burst out laughing. Why have you got BJ on your bum? Speedy said. I looked down. I was horrified. It did say Martin in Chinese. The only problem is that Martin in Chinese looks like the letters B. J in England. And BJ in English means blowjob. And if you don't know what blowjob means, have a look on Google. But let me tell you now, it is something sexual. And that is what I have got tattooed on my bum by accident. And yes, if you're wondering, I obviously still have that tattoo today. So there we have it, the story, one of the stories from my ebook English on the Toilet. You may even have already read it. You can buy it on Amazon. It actually has got some good reviews on Amazon. It's got something, it's about 4.6 out of 5 stars, which I think is pretty good. But now I have the audio version as well. So even if you read it a long time ago, maybe you would like to listen to it. So if you would like to listen to it, you can now buy it. It currently sells for £9.99 because it has the audiobook and the ebook with exercises and lots more. But for the next week, you can buy it for £4.99. So it's 50% off. So as I said, it's not going to change the world. It's not going to help you achieve your dreams, but you will certainly learn some new vocabulary, a few things about grammar, and I guarantee you will enjoy it. So if you want to buy it, great. If not, no problem at all. But if you enjoyed the story that you just listened to, just know that there are lots more stories on this audio book that you can listen to like that. So you'll just be paying a very tiny bit of money for a bit of enjoyment. The way I always think about this is when I go to my favorite restaurant and probably calling it a restaurant is a bit much. It's Nando's in the UK, if anyone knows about it. Well, they do a chocolate cake. It's called Choc A Lot and it costs £5.50. And I think, ugh, do I want to spend £5.50 on a little bit of chocolate? But then I think, you know what, this is going to taste fucking great and give me a lot of satisfaction for the next five minutes or so. So I do it. So the same way, I suppose, is a way you could think. If you think this book is going to give you some satisfaction, probably not as much as a chocolate cake, then it would be a good idea to buy it at half price. If not, don't worry about it. Not everyone orders a dessert, do they? But if you would like to buy it, the link to buy it is in the podcast you are listening to right now. So just pause the podcast, click the link inside the podcast, and then you will be able to buy it for half of the price. Oh, just one more thing I forgot. I'm not so good at all of these things, am I? I will send an email, by the way. So if you're not on my email list, make sure you sign up to it because I'm going to send an email. You need to insert a code to get the 50% off because it normally sells for £9.99. So where it says redeem coupon, I think it says something like that. Insert 50, the number, percent, the word off, 50% off. But this will be written inside the description to this podcast. So before you click the link, just read the description so you know how to get your 50% off. Anyway, that's it for today. I will be back next week. I'm planning on trying to do a podcast every week now. Now, it won't be the usual rock and roll conversation type podcast, but a type of podcast that can help you every week. Because obviously I have things that I sell. I have my online courses, this audiobook as well. But 
I know some people can't afford my paid things and I still want to help you as well. So I'm hoping to do a podcast every week. Now, I might just be saying that because I'm feeling really energized. I'm not sure, but hopefully I will be able to do one podcast every week. The problem is when I get into normal life again, because I'm still kind of on holiday, my normal life is actually quite difficult because I have a full time job where I am a lecturer at a university in London. And I also run Rock and Roll English, which is basically another full time job. And I also have two small children, which obviously take up quite a lot of my time. So when I don't know, in sort of two months, I might be thinking, yeah, one podcast a week is too much. But I'm going to do my absolute best. My absolute best, that is to help you to achieve your dreams so I can achieve mine. And obviously, always keeping things in the R&R &R English style of not boring. Doing things I enjoy because, again, otherwise, what is the point? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I will see you next week. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.